how are we going to activate this quest? For that, we need to actually build out our quest component. I left that off last episode because there was a lot of information already being thrown at you, but today we're going to make our quest component. So let's start by setting up the variables that we're going to be using. Number one will be our active quests. And we're going to keep track of these in a uh, slightly maybe strange way uh, at first glance. We're going to have a string map. So we're going to map a string, which is going to be each quest's individual ID, like objectives have individual IDs, so will the quests. So each quest is going to have such an ID, and then we're going to map that to a specific quest in our world, so our uh, base quest objects reference. And then we'll make another variable, and that will be our finished quests. The reason we do this is because this way it's going to be super easy uh, to save and load these, because we can't very well save and load object references because those are places in memory and those are going to be different between every single play session because they're literally a memory address and they just get assigned to whatever memory is open in your pc at the time so those aren't variables that you can save but strings we can save so we can save all the quest ids and then we can find the quests the objects in the world as the game starts up again with those quest id strings on them and then activate them. So that's the reason that we're doing this in maybe a slightly strange way at first glance, because I'm thinking forward to being able to save and load these quest data as well. Now it's time to start making some functions because making functions is what we do best. Uh, let's make some functions to check whether or not a specific quest is already uh, in progress or has already started or anything along those lines. So uh, let's say uh, query quest active so whether or not this quest is currently something that we're working on you can also call this quest started whatever you prefer and we want to be able to do this by object we don't want to be working everywhere with only strings uh, because that gets a little bit bothersome we want to just pass around objects easily like that so we'll say our item or our quest to check or something like that which will be of type uh, base quest. And then the base quest itself, I don't believe we've given a ID variable yet. So let's go open up our base quest. And as you can see, we don't have an ID variable yet. So we'll give this uh, a quest ID, uh, which will be a string, much like the objectives themselves. You could reuse, technically speaking, the objective ID of the topmost objective in your hierarchy. Uh, I prefer having this as its own quest uh, ID variable, uh, which we're going to just make exposed as well, so we can add this easily in the world editor. Make sure to compile that, and let's actually just save everything that we've been working on. Now that we have our quest to check uh, in our quest component again, now we can get the quest ID from that. And we can just simply check if uh, that quest ID uh, is contained in our map. And if it is or is not, uh, doesn't matter, we'll just return that as a value. So instead of calling this query quest active, uh, maybe it is more accurate to uh, call this something like is quest active. And we'll just we'll just kind of copy and paste this over into a different function. And instead of calling this quest active, we'll call this is quest finished. And the only difference is going to be, uh, instead of checking our active quests, we check our finished quests. We just check if the quest ID is present in this map of finished quests. And we need these two because uh, we don't want to be able to add a quest that we've already either started or a quest that we've already completed. So when we're going to make the start quest or the add quest function, which will be next, we want to be able to check both of these before doing anything else. So let's make that add quest function. The quest that we're going to be adding will be our input parameter. So this will be our quest to add. And before anything else, we're going to query our uh, active quests and our finished quest. And a funny thing about that actually is you can go into both of these and you can mark them as being pure. Uh, because when a function is called as pure, it's effectively called in reverse. It doesn't have an execution pin. It's just whenever we reach something with an execution pin that uses this, that is when this will get run. So pure functions are good for making sure you always have the most up-to-date data at the time of the data being requested. And it also doesn't use execution pins, so it doesn't make you hook up a billion different things. So the quest to add will go into both quests to check, and then we will check uh, for both of these if they are not Boolean, and then that will go into a and Boolean. So we want to check whether or not 
they are either not activated or finished. So a quest that we have not interacted with at all up until this point. So if they're both not active yet or not finished at all, that is when we will move on. So we'll put in a branching node. And if this is true, that'll be where we put in the rest of our code, where we will get our active quests. And we will add to that the quest that we are starting, which comes from our input here. And then we're going to be uh, putting that in under the get ID, our quest ID, as the string key that we're putting into the map. So this way we can find the quest objective by putting in the quest ID. Now going into our uh, quest base class, wherever it might be, quest base here, uh, we set this up as init objectives on begin play. That was good for troubleshooting purposes before. We didn't really end up using it to be fair. So that might've been a little confusing. I'm sorry if it was, uh, because we're going to uh, make a custom event for this instead that we'll just call start quest. Because we don't really need to initialize any objectives or bind to anything or do any like weird stuff until the quest itself has become active. We of course don't want to be able to complete something by accident before even starting it in the first place. So back in our quest component, now that we have uh, that working, we can get our quest to add. And after we've added it, we can start the quest. Now, when we complete a quest, we want to move it from the active quests to the finished quests as well. So uh, we get our quest to add again, and we uh, bind to on quest completed is the event dispatcher that we made ourselves. And uh, we'll create an event for that, create a matching function, and we'll call that function complete quest. And complete quest is actually gonna be really, really easy because we just get our quest ID and then we remove that quest ID from the active quests and we add it to the finished quests. So that is just as easy as saying remove and add. And we don't even need to supply in the object reference for remove because you can just remove something by only providing in the key. And for the finished quests, we can provide in the ID and then uh, also need to provide in uh, the object. Technically speaking, uh, you might be able to get away with just making this an array of only strings, uh, but I like having them as a map. So now when the quest is marked as completed, it's automatically moved from the active quests to the finished quests as well. And with that, we have a functioning quest on our hands. The only thing that we need to do is add this component to our player character and add in a little bit of code that adds this quest to that quest component. So uh, let's do both of those things real quick. Let's go into our third person character and here I will add a uh, quest component. And then of course, also don't forget to in your blueprint, uh, go into your class settings, uh, go into your interfaces here, add an implementation for interface and add our quest utils, which will get our interfaces opening up here, get quest components. We just provide in the quest components. And I will just add in a quick trigger box. And we're just gonna do this through the level blueprint in this case. Uh, ideally, maybe you wanna make an actor uh, that can specifically like supply quests or whatever. But then again, uh, maybe you wanna do this through like a dialogue tree or a, a number of different ways how you can do this realistically speaking. So I'm just gonna do this uh, for example, through the level blueprint. So we open the level blueprint and we uh, get the on actor begin overlap. We check the other actor uh, and we get the quest component, which is the interface that we set up last time. And if the quest component is valid, then we simply add a quest. And the quest that we will be adding will be this quest that physically exists within the world. So we just click on it and then we create a reference to it in our blueprint here, in our level blueprints, and that's how we can add that quest. So now, real quick, what will happen when we overlap with this thing? When we overlap with this thing, it's gonna get our character's quest component. Anything that doesn't have a quest component is gonna stop there because it's not gonna be able to get a valid quest component as a return value. Only our player character will have a quest component to return. So it's going to supply that quest component, and then our level blueprint is going to activate this quest in that quest component. That will, if it is not yet activated or finished, add it to the active quests list, and then also start the quest. Starting the quest will initialize its objectives, which is going to, in this case, look out for this to be overlapped with. And now we'll be able to see if we uh, go over here, uh, it'll print out a hello. I just put a print string in there real quick uh, to show you when the quest is activated. So now we have that quest activated. We don't have any visuals yet to prove that uh, or to see what quests are active or not. 
something I will do in the future. Uh, but now it's looking out for the trigger volume that we placed over there. So when we go over there, we will get a print string showing us that, in fact, that objective has been completed. So test quest objective one completed. And just to show you, uh, if I don't pick up the quest first, uh, it's not going to do that because we don't have that objective existing yet. So that we don't have anything listening out for this thing to be overlapped with. And as such, uh, we can't complete the objective yet. Only when we actually pick up this quest by overlapping with the trigger box over here, will we be able to do anything with the trigger box over here. Now, this doesn't technically complete the quest yet, uh, because the quest itself is only going to get completed once all the objectives that are assigned to it will be completed. And we can build some simple implementation for just this one-off kind of objective, uh, but that's going to be a little bit wasteful, because I intend for the very next video to dive into setting up nested objectives or objective collections, meaning that we can have multiple objectives that all need to be completed to finish up a quest, which is going to allow you to nest as many collections as you want into a singular quest. That objective collection is going to have all of the logic tied to it for completing the quest as a whole, because for 99% of the quests that you're probably going to do, you want to be able to set up more than just one objective. But we'll talk a little bit about that next time, because uh, for now we have a functioning start to a quest system. So hopefully it has all been clear to you guys so far, and next time we're going to get into some really, really exciting stuff. And for the full course, if you're watching this in the future, it should be all up on the YouTube channel already. But if you're watching this shortly after it was uploaded, there will be a link down below in the description to the Patreon where you can find the full course. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. A huge thank you to my Cave Digger tier supporters, Sergey Thomas, 